Hey everyone, it's Mark from Guitar Nerds here bringing you the top five guitar fails of all time. And by guitar fails, I don't mean this, or this, or this. No, today we're looking at five products that were touted as the next big thing but fell flat upon release. First up is a weird looking guitar from the king of synths. Number five. Known for their pioneering synthesizers, Moog dipped their toe into the murky waters of the guitar world in 2008 with the E1. Packed with controls, the E1 used Moog's own pickups and circuitry to offer two different infinite sustain models as well as a muted mode to cancel out the natural string sustain. The E1 also shipped with a custom foot controller, allowing the player to control the harmonic bend mode and onboard filter, similar to that found on Moog's legendary synths. Despite some revolutionary features and an incredible build, the E1 failed to set the guitar world alight and is now only available as a special order from Moog themselves. Number four. Picture this, it's the year 2000. Line 6 are dominating the amp market with their fancy new digital modeling technology and you're one of the oldest amp builders in the world. What do you do to compete? Adopting a buzzword from the early millennia, Fender unveiled the Cyber Twin, a mashup of emerging technology and vintage looks. Built into a twin housing with dual 12 inch drivers, the Cyber Twin offered multiple amp models as well as a huge range of digital effects. However, most people will remember the Cyber Twin as one of the first amps to utilize motorized knobs that turn by themselves to match the settings of the selected preset. Though Fender claimed the Cyber Twin offered a genuine alternative in the digital amp modeling revolution, customers gravitated towards Line 6 and their flex tone models. Still, motorized knobs are cool. Number three. From a digital amp to a digital guitar for number three on our list. The most recent entry in this countdown, the PV8200 was released in 2012, to much interest from specialist guitar press as well as the wider tech industry. Featuring onboard auto-tune technology provided by software from Antares, the AT200 was always in tune and featured perfect intonation. Alternate tunings were even available just by placing your finger on a particular position on the fretboard. This interesting quirk meant that the AT200 could produce baritone, bass and even mandolin style tones. Turning off the auto-tune software allowed the player to use the standard PV humbuckers on board. Despite the AT200 being a half decent guitar to play and the auto-tune software working fairly convincingly, this guitar failed to change the world in the way that it promised and disappeared from store shelves in 2015. Number two. When it comes to amps, we all know that bigger is better, right? Well, that's what Marshall were thinking in the early 2000s when they released the Mode 4, a 350 watt four channel monster inspired by the heavy tones of the new metal era. Utilising the technology from the AVT series, the Mode 4 employed two ECC83 preamp valves across four channels, with the solid state power amp switching modes between classic and modern depending on the selected channel. Due to the impressive power of the Mode 4 head, Marshall also designed two special cabs, each capable of handling 400 watts. Unfortunately, this whopping stack failed to connect with a generation of new metal guitarists, many of whom were looking to create huge tones, but in a bedroom friendly box. Still, at least the Marshall Mode 4 wasn't the worst new metal inspired amp of all time. We're looking at you, Hughes and Kettner Warp 7. Number one. A number one on our list is a series of guitars that was designed to invigorate one of the largest guitar manufacturers in the world. Launched to much fanfare in 1983, the Fender Elite series consisted of Strat, Tele and Precision based models, all available in a range of classic and contemporary finishes. The Elite Strat featured shallow tuners, a biflex truss rod system with micro tilt neck adjuster, shallow strap locks, two hardened steel easy glider string trees, side mounted jack socket and a free flight vibrato system, as well as three serrated rubber control knobs. Loaded with hum cancelling pickups and the TBX tone circuit, the Elite Strat served as a template for the future Eric Clapton, Richie Sambora and Buddy Guy signature strats that would follow. As with the Strat, the Elite Tele included a whole host of state-of-the-art features, including the noise cancelling pickups and TBX tone technology, but most crucially came with a stick-on pick guard. This unique touch allowed the player to choose between two distinct looks. The Elite series was just one of the ideas that Fender had to revive the brand in the early 1980s, 
but these radical designs underperformed and CBS sold the company to a group of Fender employees in 1985. So there we have it, our top five products that shot for the moon and ended up in the gutter. Did we miss anything? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what you saw, remember to leave a like and subscribe to Guitar Nerds. We'll have loads more top 10 and top five videos coming for you very soon. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.